Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we're talking about alcohol. Ryan has not actually been drinking. No, I'm not. I'm if anything, I'm in the three o'clock lull. <laughs> feeling tired. My brain's starting to slow down a little bit. Uh, so yeah, we want to talk uh, talk about alcohol and alcohol culture and drinking and getting drunk and all all kinds of things like that. Uh, first, icebreaker. Yes. So. What is um, your favorite beverage in terms of like the most delicious one? Oh, the most delicious. Uh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I think the one that I've been I've went on the most about is actually um, what's it called? Um, it's one at Booster Juice. Booster Juice. Mind, m- mind over match. Mind over matcha is what it is. Uh, matcha, vanilla, yogurt, blueberry something else you just like listed off a bunch of things oh but you blend them together into a juice into a beverage that's sure what, that's what bo- booster juice is yeah i didn't uh, say it had to be alcoholic yeah no that's I, true that's true I, well i, I mean, suggested the topic yeah well mine is chocolate milkshakes oh, yeah. so um pre-mixed ones or ones that you mix yourself with the syrup um no like ones i would get at a restaurant like with like yeah. uh like that are heavy with like ice cream and stuff or whatever you put in chocolate milkshakes. Oh, sorry, chocolate milkshakes. I stopped listening after chocolate milk. <laughs> That's thanks, man. Yeah, no, no I, I totally huckled it, <laughs> which is actually a thing in in my other circle of friends. Oh man, I okay. To listen to part of it, and I think I know what the rest. I know chocolate milkshakes are wonderful. They are my my go to. Um, they're not they're not worse for me than soda. Um, they're not better for me than soda either, but they're a nice break from, from that kind of thing. And every time I get a, I, I get a milkshake at a restaurant, which is not very often, but I, I'm with people and I'm like, I would like a chocolate milkshake. Other people around me are like, oh yeah, milkshakes are an option. I would like milkshakes. What I'm saying is my milkshake Brings lots of people to the yard. Yes! I was waiting for it! Yes! I was hoping I wouldn't have to make that joke. Because the audience has already gone through like three iterations of it already. <laughs> but alcohol. Alcohol. Uh, so, Ryan, you're sort of a social drinker and you work in a bar. Yeah. Uh, I do not drink at all. Mm-hmm. Like, not a drop. Um, and I, di- I used to work in a bar a long time ago, and I've spent a lot of time in bars because i went to university mm-hmm. but t- can you describe like an early drinking experience i can tell you about the first time that i had my own beer man it's almost like we talked about this before yeah uh so uh, i don't have a specific age but i was over at a friend's house uh in my teenage were years. you were you over age or under I was, the I was age under the age. The Let, age. Let's say okay. I was probably uh, I'll, I'll ballpark it around sixteen. Mm-hmm. I was I was a couple of years away from the legal age, but not so young that it was like you would tell the story and call child services on my parents. Kind sure. of deal. So I was over at a friend's house, and my friend's mother called my parents to to ask permission that if I that I could have a beer. Like, so she, you know, she was a very responsible... That is very responsible, yeah. So, because um, she was going to let her son have a beer, um, she called my parents to ask if if they would have it. And they're like, yeah, no problem, we trust you, you know, kind of deal. Cool. Um, So, my first beer, my first alcoholic drink, was a Molson Canadian in a bottle uh, that took me... Sort of cold, I assume. It started cold. It took me two (laughs) hours to drink it. (laughs) It was very warm afterwards. Very warm. Uh, it's, it's, you know, in retrospect, it's amazing that anybody starts drinking alcohol because the first time I had beer, like, I thought it was disgusting. Like, other people would drink so readily, and I couldn't. Uh, for the longest time, I would pair, um, and this is because I love bananas so much, I would drink, I would pair, like, drinking, um, beer with a shot of, like, banana liqueur. That's how I, like, for the longest time would drink alcohol. It would be beer, and then chase it with banana liqueur. So the thing I don't understand, and everybody tells me this is like, why, when I first started, I didn't really like it. And I'm like, why did you keep doing it? I don't know. It was the same with, um, 
I had a friend who really liked Guinness and we were heading to Africa. And so I would, every time I would go to the bar, I would order Guinness. I didn't even like it at the time, but I would buy it and drink it until I liked it because I knew that he liked it and I wanted to share in the experience with him. So I, I did that. Anyways, back to my, it's I know it's, it's, it's not, when you say it out loud, it doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> but anyways, back to the story because it, it gets funnier. Uh, so we're at, we're at the friend's house. And, uh, so I had one, I don't even remember how many my friend had. He couldn't have had much more than me. Like he didn't become intoxicated. Um, and then we were there with the mother's boyfriend and a friend of his and they were drinking more. And then at like three o'clock in the morning, we all got the munchies. And so they just, they dumped out as much money out of their walls as they could find, which was, I don't know, like 40 or 50 bucks, gave it to my buddy and I. And there was a Burger King that had just opened in town. It was still 24 hours. <laughs> so they told us to go walk to Burger King and order as much food as we could get. So we get down there, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, look up at the menu, do the calculations. We go to the, uh, the window or the, the counter. And, like, I mean, I'm tall, but we're two fat guys at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm familiar with the feeling. And we ask for 16 Junior Whoppers and four fries. Nice. And nice. she, she looks at me and she's like, what? Uh, she's like, 16 Junior Whoppers, yeah, and four fries. Uh, figuring there was four of us. So we would each get four cheap burgers and fries. And I, didn't, I ended up not being able to eat it all because it's 4 o'clock in the morning. But yeah, so my first beer took me two hours to drink. It was Canadian. It was piss warm by the time I was done. And that was a prelude to walking to Burger King at 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning and getting 16 Junior Whoppers and four fries um, before finally passing out from exhaustion. Nice. That was my first drinking experience. My first drinking experience, I did not drink anything. Uh, I, I, think, have... I think you're hazy on the definition of a drinking experience. No, 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 no. <laughs> Trust me, by the, time, by the time I finish telling you, you'll be like, yes, that was a drinking experience. But yeah. I... Uh, I have never actually drank a beer okay. or a shot. Like, I have tasted wine and beer and shots and things like that. Um, but a, a single smell or taste is enough to make me go, no, I, I don't want that. That is not a thing that I want. Um, but when I was 15, uh, we won, I was, I was in drama, shockingly, and we won a bunch of awards for, uh, we were in the Sears Drama Festival. And so naturally, we had a party at somebody's house. And we were all giant fucking nerds. So we only, I think, especially when, we're, when you're like, you know, we our, our ages ranged from like 15 to 17. And we didn't, like... We were having sort of a traditional party because that seemed like the thing to have. Um, like, because we also we were like we were from all kinds of different social circles and all kinds of like the only thing we had in common really, uh, apart from a couple of us, was that we were in this play. And so we're like we have music playing, like you know whatever's on the on the radio, it's like Offspring, and because it's you know, 1997. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's there's some drinks, but and, and somebody got some soda from the store and some snacks. And, um, and somebody somebody came up with the idea, and it, I, I, it might have been me. Uh, I don't remember whose idea it was that what we needed for this party was beer. Because beer was a party thing. Now, none of us were of age. None of us had cars. So we had to, we cobbled together a bunch of money. Um, we ordered um, B&D, which is a, the delivery service. Uh, but but just just so that we wouldn't, um, and, and, and I remember being deeply involved in the strategy of this, because the, the, the thing that interested me was solving this problem of how do we how do we get beer without the delivery person noticing that they are delivering a case of beer to a house party of people who are underage. Because mm -hmm. if they find out, they will they will just simply refuse your money and walk away for good reason. Mm -hmm. So 
we we had a friend who lived down the street, and he was also in the play. So we, we they were like, we'll get the, the beer delivered to his house. Because um, he only lives like four houses away. Um, but we'll send, and, and it hit a baby face, and so did I. And so we, we sent somebody with him who actually looked of age. And we cobbled together all our money. It's like 40 bucks for a case of beer or whatever, plus the delivery. And send them off away they go to get this beer delivery. And they had no, they encountered no difficulty at all. Like the, the, the bit of this that turns into like an 80s movie didn't. They had no difficulty. But it was like 9.30 when we came up with this genius ass plan. And at 10 o'clock, you know, people's parents started showing up to, to pick them up and... And then now, now, beer delivery takes a while. Mm-hmm. So, by the time they got back with the case of beer, the party had evaporated. Mm-hmm. It was gone. It was it was just them and a case of beer. <laughs> I think they wound up selling it to somebody's dad. <laughs> um, for for less than we paid for it, but they did get to keep the money. <laughs> um, but yeah, because <laughs> I I was one of the people who evaporated because I was like, yeah, if I want to ride home, I better get the hell out of here. Uh, I live far away, and so we we all we all like like there was like nobody left when they got back. And we, we all saw them in school the next day. And they were like, what happened? You sons of bitches. <laughs> that, was, that was like the earliest attempt at drinking. Short of that one time when I was a kid and found like a can of soda on a counter. Mm-hmm. And I had tried to drink it only to realize about like just like. Four seconds too late, I was drinking an ashtray. That was not a good night. (laughs) God. But, no, like, I don't... So, I didn't grow up in a house of drinking. Yeah. Um, Like, my mom doesn't drink. Um, You know, some of the men around around me drank when I was a kid. But as I got into my teens... um, I wound up spending most of my, my, like, like... the guy who was around most was, was uh, a guy named Dennis, who I've written about on blogs, actually, in the show notes. Um, he was a really great guy. But one of the things with Dennis is Dennis was a recovered alcoholic. Um, and he had a lot of friends who, who, had, who had recovered, like, years and years and years ago. Mm-hmm. But it meant that Dennis didn't drink. Mm-hmm. He would drink, like, orange soda or something every once in a while. And otherwise, he pretty much just drank water or coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't grow up around people who drink. So it never became like a social thing for me. Mm-hmm. But that's an early drinking experience. Yeah. See, no. I told you. It, d- it did fit the bill. It did fit the bill. <laughs> so <clears throat> drinking, of course, leads to talk of drunkenness. Yep. Um, we have both worked in bars. We've mm-hmm. both seen plenty of drunk people and differently drunk people, I imagine. You get lonely drunks, you get needy drunks you get angry drunks you get Mm -hmm. flirty drunks Mm -hmm. um who i would distinguish from needy drunks Mm -hmm. um you know there's there's all manner of drunk people but the the sort of theme tends to be a series of poor decisions and then presumably a hangover Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it depends. I mean, uh, there's always uh, the old wives' tales of um, beer before liquor, or liquor before beer. But ultimately, it comes down to how dehydrated you get. Mm. Um, you know, uh, especially having just finished a biology course, and one of the, the final chapters it was on um, on the kidney fe- functions and whatnot. So, you know, just what happens when you pump in a lot of liquid into your body. 
what happens with diuretics, um, mm -hmm. alcohol goes to which section and knocks out which sections of the brain and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> so um, yeah, I mean, the, the hangovers tend to be worse when you're severely dehydrated. Um, uh, but, yeah, um, drinking experience, especially coming out of university and, and working at a bar. I mean, I... It would never be charitable to say that I was, in any sense, a party person. <laughs> uh, I am very much not a party person. Uh, I have I have consumed liberal amounts of alcohol before, um, as, but in the last few years, I realized it's becoming fewer and fewer, far between. I like to think it's because I learned my lesson that you wake up and you have that I am never doing this again because I never want to feel this way again. And I think at some point it finally stuck. I mean, the last time I remember drinking to the point of needing to vomit was, I want to say two years ago, I ruined Jay's and Renee's bathroom because I got blitzed on white wine. And Sarah, being the champ that she was, she was the one who cleaned it up. Jesus. No, it was, it was, it was one of those things, that's, it's so weird. Like, I, I got blitzed on white wine just obliterated we went to bed we were staying over because we you know we none of you know, we all decided to consume alcohol so not none of us could drive so yeah. we, we stayed over at the friend's house and i got up and i went to the washroom wasn't feeling well and i wanted to splash some water in my face i ended up throwing up and i'm a sink puker because i think it's because i'm so tall i just don't like getting all the way down to the ground for the toilet and so i'm a sink puker and in this particular case i took a lot of splash damage actually i should say the the bathroom took the a lot bathroom of, took the a bathroom lot of took a lot of splash damage so i stumbled back into the bedroom in the dark looking for my glasses and sarah's like what are you doing and i'm like oh, i need to go clean up in the washroom and so she ended up cleaning and i just kind of stood there in my underwear <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just like <laughs> what happened well i exorcisted all over the washroom <laughs> yeah and now now it needs to clean up an aisle three yeah and she chastised me like just use the toilet I'm like puking but anyway, so like that oh was that was uh, two maybe three years ago now. Um, that is the thing I don't. So the thing the the two things I don't get about being drunk, and the, are, are the things that everyone says, which is first off they're like, yeah, you know, I get so drunk I throw up, and that's, you know, whatever. I. I don't want to do things that make me throw up. I don't. Mm. I don't like it. I don't throw up very often. Yeah. The last time was when I had food poisoning, and it was not what I would categorize as a good experience. Mm -hmm. So the notion that either drinking makes it a good experience or that people who drink think it's a good experience um, is weird to me. I'll, now, I'll maybe explain that in a second. Make your second point. Now, now, now and like I understand that there, 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 are, there are consequences to throwing up when you're drinking. Like you, like you sober up a bunch. Mm -hmm. Or that is what I have heard. No, they're wrong. Or you sort of <laughs> feel a bit better. You, you feel better because your body is not actively trying to expel poison out yeah, of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you don't sober up. You. But, <laughs> but, but I assume that it must feel good because the other thing, the thing that people always do is they're like, man, like, I'm going to feel so bad in the morning. <laughs> or I had that morning where I feel so bad. And like that, the morning, the morning is the part that feels bad. Mm -hmm. The nighttime, th like, therefore was good like you're doing this sort of shitty cost benefit analysis <laughs> you're like no, no no morning bad nighttime good which means the throwing up portion which occurs during the nighttime has to either either count as a good thing or be or the good time has to be so good that it has to discount the bit where you just like straight up exorcisted something mm -hmm. yes exorcisted um from the verb to exorcist uh which is another way of saying to vomit in a projectile fashion Peace <laughs> um, i do want to i do want to address one thing in terms of the consuming alcohol because i think sometimes especially uh i when i was on the first aid team um there was a fair number of people who were if not teetotalers definitely did not really consumed to the point of intoxication no kidding and so and so you you sometimes i'm not saying like you everybody should be drunk so you know what the feeling is but sometimes there's a, a little bit of a misunderstanding in terms of the intoxication side of it like you know people don't so there, i imagine maybe there are some people who drink not 
like they might see um, vomiting as a as a badge of honor or that is I have achieve, definitely achieve met those it. people. Uh, but it, as a person who's dr- consumed alcohol to the point of, of vomiting either that night or the next morning. Again, the next morning is more of a function of, uh, of um, um, expelling, like basically expelling poison out of you. Because that's what it is. Like Intoxication is, is mild t- uh, mild poisoning. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's what vomiting is, is your body trying to actively get rid of it out of your system so it doesn't have to process it. Um, but... Uh, it's alcohol poisoning. That's, uh, yeah. I, keep, I keep saying poison, but like it's, it's alcohol poisoning is, is what I'm the phrasing I'm trying to get at. But anytime that I've consumed to the point of it, it's not that I was thinking I'm going to get drunk or I'm going to get sick or whatever. It's you know you get busy in the social situation because usually you're drinking around other people. Um, it's kind of like have you you commented on um, the difference on your road trips between Water and Perrier? Yeah. Right? So you commented that Perrier, you tend to nurse, right? Whereas water, you tend to consume quite quickly. Yep. I think it's the same thing with alcohol. When you when you knock out the ability to really pay attention to the passage of time, you really stop paying attention to your awareness of your body. You just, like, you have it in your hand, and all of a sudden it's like, you know, like maybe there's a mild thirst response or whatever, and so you drink. And you just, you consume it a lot quicker. Now, I'm not saying that this applies to binge drinking behaviors, toxic masculinity and whatnot yeah like we're, you're we're encouraging other people we, to we, consume yeah but 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 at least at least in your experience that is that is one way and that seems like a reasonable way of interpreting it's it. like it's like a runaway or downhill like you just yeah. it suddenly gets away from you and you're not you're it, I, you lose the capacity to be aware of either your environment or yourself and so like it just it's really easy to passively drink i would find that more compelling if i did if i hadn't met lots of people who make the statement and i think this is a very common statement oh man i'm gonna feel so bad in the morning before starting any drinking they're Mm -hmm. like i am going to do a thing tonight that is going to make me feel really awful in the morning and it's not training for a 5k (laughs) like like here's a thing where where and 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 the other thing of course that goes along with drunkenness is poor decisions yeah um, you know, then people, people joke about it all the time. We have a culture of, of sort of joking about the bad decisions you make mm-hmm. when you're drunk or w- when you're drunk, bracketing, of course, uh, the entire bit about rape culture where some people are responsible for things when they're drunk and some people are not apparently, um, or women get blamed for things that happen to them when they are drunk. Mm-hmm. Um, that is, that is. A conversation for an entirely different podcast that is likely not hosted by two white dudes. Yeah. Um, you see, as you point at your junk, I point at the show notes. So, because if I can find that podcast, I'm going to link to see, it. See, now you're just pointing at both our junks. God damn it! Remember when like things used to be over here? Shut up. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. I know YouTube um, changed. <laughs> But um, sorry, uh, audio only <laughs> listeners. Uh, we have been doing a fair amount of pointing in space. <laughs> Um, no, the, the, the notion that, that I, the, the, the reason why I, I've never had a desire to get drunk has less to do with my distaste for the taste of alcohol. I mean, that's a big part of it is I don't like it, but I spend a lot of effort managing my behavior and like trying to be myself, trying to stay in character. And I have concerns about how alcohol or mind altering substances will affect that. Um, maybe they will make it harder. That is bad. Um, I don't like the person that I am when I am unmanaged in that kind of way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, from my experience, neither does anyone else. So, like, that amount of effort is, is, is worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Um, both for my sanity and for the sort of well-being of other people, um, in my vicinity. And more like, like I guess the, the 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 scarier bit is if it makes it easier. You know, people are like, well, you you relax, you know, you you stop. And I'm like, yeah, like if if drinking helped me deal with things like anxiety and and whatnot, that would almost be worse. Like I would not, I would worry about not stopping that, and that is also a large problem. So I I opt to just 
leave that question unanswered because if I knew, it would change the way I think about it. Mm-hmm. So I have I have no desire to find out. Mm-hmm. But I mean, in addition to that, like the additional op- impairment of making a bunch of bad decisions. Um, you know, everything from deciding you can karate fight a telephone pole to uh, awkward flirtation to whatever the hell beer pong is. I saw an interesting update on the beer pong of, of putting the cups on top of a Roomba on a table so you have a moving target. Some, sometimes people people who do bad things are very ingenious. Why is your Roomba on a table? Why not? I think that's, that's like, actually pretty funny. Like, 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 and that's the thing is, is I, I am around a lot of drunk people. I, I mean, I mean, in, in social settings, I am around a lot of drunk people, um, and at weddings, at cons, at parties. I understand that social drinking is a thing. I, I, I don't like really disagree with any, with any notion of drinking. Although I noticed that as I've gotten older, the amount of drinking that goes on is usually like three beers and then everybody's like, okay, I'm sleepy. Yep, yep. Um, which which is more fun is more fun for me mm-hmm. because um, what was the 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 statement I made? I was I was talking with someone at a con, and they were they were drunk. It was like two in the morning. We were talking about uh, DJ software, mm-hmm. and conversations with drunk people don't count in a sort of meaningful way. Like like I will have conversations with all kinds of drunk people but as a sober person uh i have a lot more sort of spare processing to do so they it gets boring Mm. but i mean drunk people will a lot of them will happily talk to you for quite a while and i will sort of nod as long as they're not being shitty Mm. but they don't count like if i want to follow up with them or refer to something in it which i often do because i will i will remember Mm. um I will I will say something like I will email you about this when you are sober, um, because I am curious to to talk about it more. And right now you are drunk, mm-hmm. like like it just whatever your side of this conversation kind of sort of doesn't matter because I'm the only one who's going to remember it. Yeah. Which I guess makes me inclined to cut drunk people a bit of slack. An occasionally necessary amount of slack, assuming that that slack doesn't involve, like, endangering people's safety in any way. Um, but it is weird. Like, I, I think part of it is also I don't want to have conversations that don't count. Yeah, I made, I made a little bit of a joke, but it's it's a, a decent, um, a decent uh, maxim for me that, you know, when a lot of times people find out that I'm a philosophy major Mm -hmm. um, or they seem to find what I say interesting and so they'll make the reference of like, oh, I want to sit down and have a beer with you or I want to get drunk with you and have a conversation. And I tend to, I tend to have the the rule that philosophy begins at the bottom of the first pint and ends at the bottom of the second because I find that one, one drink will kind of loosen the mind a little bit, make it Mm -hmm. more open and pliable. Um, It'll make you stop ruminating on things that you're thinking about, you know, and let you focus in on the moment. And then after two drinks, things get sloppy. Thinking gets sloppy, and then it tends to get into really weird um, what-ifs that are fun. Fun in terms of a conjectural (laughs) thing, but not really material to any kind of discovery of truth sense. Um, And it's kind of fun when we're sitting here talking about alcohol. Like, I miss... Uh, undergrad and grad school were like not not the drunken antics side of it but like when you'd sit in a bar for three four hours and have really great like fun conversations i do miss that feeling of fun conversations because usually when i have a couple of drinks i do get you know it's tired or i get bored i become acutely aware that the time is passing by and i'm not enjoying myself and sometimes sometimes you know i'll have to excuse myself and just like go home or whatever because the conversation is is veering into areas that i'm not particularly interested in and i can't lose myself in it i can't get absorbed in the conversation because like eh, I, I feel like the 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 vicious irony in that 
is uh, the, the, that you miss those conversations mm. is that we started this podcast to record and and publish those kinds of conversations yeah um yeah, in was, a non-bar setting it was a philosophy conversation without alcohol yeah i mean i think i had enough drinks but yeah whatever. you you politely excused my my poor thing well, that's the thing like i like i i don't have like, I don't have any moral... Like, it comes up a lot when you tell people you, you don't drink. People mm-hmm. get really... It's like being a vegetarian. People get real curious about why. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't have any particular moral objections to drinking. Uh, or drinking... Or even drinking to excess. Um, you know, do what you want. I am not particularly bothered by it. I am occasionally bored by it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have concerns about the sort of structural problems that surround it. Mm-hmm. But in a vacuum... Uh, drinking to excess seem or drinking or drinking to excess seems fine. Um, like I have, I have worked, spent a long enough working in bars to know that lots of people do it, and lots of people, those people turn out fine. I just, I am not one of them. No, and I'm not a particularly social drinker i mean i'll have it with a select few i don't people sometimes ask me why i don't go out drinking and for me it's largely i don't like drinking with a lot of people around and that's not in the sense of like i don't like being drunk around other people but like in drinking as performance art like doing a one-man show on a stage with a bottle of whiskey yeah i don't particularly enjoy that either but i don't think i think it's because i'm not good at that um no but i prefer i prefer drinking at home I, I enjoy being comfortable. Um, I don't feel well, if I if I feel like I have to leave my apartment because I'm bored. It's but I feel different. like I have to wear pants. But yeah, I'm really but, not into it. But when you're out drinking with other people and stuff, there's the hazard. The hazard. There's the um, hassle of you know, like if you want to get home, um, either you can't consume mm-hmm. alcohol, even if you want to consume more, or you have to arrange for alternative transportation or walk or whatever. So like, there's the hassle of leaving and going home. Um, you know, you're, you're spending a lot of money, and you're not necessarily enjoying the environment or whatnot. But I, I prefer by like just being by myself, mm-hmm. sitting at home, um, watching YouTube videos. I got drunk one time a couple a couple months back, um, just this past year, because it was after I moved into my my apartment. Um, I got drunk and just sat and watched the crash crash course literature series. <laughs> That's how I spent my evening. That, I got a, that is Ryan Huckle drunk. I got that's what that is. I got I got drunk. I don't even remember what it was. If it was mixed drinks, I think it was mixed drinks. I, I think it was mis- mixing myself uh, white, white white Cubans <laughs> because I had I had the almond milk and I had the Kahlua and I had the rum. So I was making myself <laughs> white Cubans um, with almond milk instead of milk. And I just got drunk and just <laughs> sat there and watched Crash Course literature. And that's how I spent my night. And it was incredibly fun to me and rewarding. I mean, I perhaps would not remember everything that was said about the books. Um, like if there was a quiz? I think if there was a quiz, I might not have done so well on it. Um, uh, but uh, I, I sat before the altar of the Green Brothers. And uh, and I, that's how I spent... And that's, I feel I, like the Green Brothers would really appreciate it if you never said those words again. Probably not. Um, and that's, but that's, that's like how I, I drink it. I'm that's not, amazing. If, if I do drink socially, it's usually a smaller group of people, um, but it's often limited. Um, but for me at home, you know, I might play video games and might, it's usually just YouTube because it's incredibly passive. Hmm. And, so, so if you were going to go drinking in Kitchener, Waterloo, which is in Ontario, Canada, yeah. um, say during a podcast meetup or something yeah. like that. Uh, where would you recommend that isn't Chainsaw? Because yeah. Chainsaw holds a special part, place in both our hearts. Yeah. Um, okay, so since you and I both came up with similar answers, I'll go with one in the hopes that you'll say the other one. Okay. Uh, I would say because I'm a beer drinker, um, mm-hmm. because I like a slightly quieter space, um, and I like variety of beer. I very much like craft beers, not in a um, snooty craft beer sense, but I like when they take different interesting flavors and make stuff. Like sure. hibiscus beer or... Um, chai latte beer like when they just experiment with the flavors um, I would say the Bent Elbow nice. uh, they have eight or nine taps um, and it's the, the general rule is if you finish a tap you get to choose the next keg so it can be a lot of different things plus they have uh, an entire book 
of what they have on tap and uh, in the, the cooler um, that you can choose from. Hmm. Um, kitchen, not so much. Their portions are kind of small, a little the nachos slow. Nachos are pretty good. No, the nachos are good. Um, uh, like I don't, I don't typically go there for the kitchen. I go there more for the, the beers, uh, the flavors. Um, so I would say, oh, and the location is kind of crap. Mm-hmm. Um, you, if you don't drive and you don't live anywhere near there, then it can be a challenge. But yeah. I would say uh, that is my favorite local place to go. So yeah, I went there uh, on the way home from Con Bravo a couple of years ago. Uh, mine, uh, the the bar of my heart lies now in the distant past, replaced by something else. Um, so uh, I would have to go with Jane Bond. Jane Bond is a club uh, up in Waterloo. They have an excellent kitchen. They have an excellent uh, vegetarian selection. Uh, my understanding is that their beers are good. They're a little louder and a little sort of more crowded. Uh, but that can be a lot of fun. And the people who I find hang out there are sort of universally cool and fun to be with although it is usually sufficiently loud that i don't spend a lot of time there yeah um but the jane bond is a good time uh if i had a second answer which i realized i do just literally right now that's the huckle as, answer yeah the, this is the huckle wrap-up right here <laughs> um no the huckle wrap-up involves you like making burritos and then watching crash course literature until you fall asleep in a burrito coma season three is coming out by the way i just saw the well i'm real excited for it now season three of of literature is coming out so um no we have a movie theater in town that serves uh drinks oh the apollo yes yeah They, they serve bottles and uh um you know they have movie popcorn which is delicious and uh they play all kinds of fun movies i watched the election results there I'm sad that I missed their showing of Tank Girl. Oh, yeah. Because um, I never saw Tank Girl in the theater. But uh, I, I did buy a membership, so I would have an incentive to sort of keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wouldn't lose track of it. But, yeah, I was like, the Apollo serves beer. That makes them a bar. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. And they are. They are wonderful. They are, the, 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 as, as a big guy, the seats are spacious. Yeah. And that is a good feeling. Like, I don't like that feeling in a regular theater where... It's not even that I feel cramped. It's that I feel like I'm encroaching on the people who are next to me. And I I think about that instead of thinking about the movie that I'm watching. Yeah. But I've seen, seen a number of things there and it's lovely and a good time. Uh, post your favorite watering holes in the comments. Uh, so that if we are in your town, we know where we should go to get a drink. Or in my case, not get a drink. If they have really good nachos, I'm super down for it though. Or karaoke bars. Yes. Um, <laughs> CFR Karaoke Podcast, uh, which will be in the show notes. Yeah. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. Stay thirsty, friends. <laughs> uh, last weekend was the fourth anniversary of Wootsu Pie. Was it? Yep. Hmm. Started Wootsu Riot three years ago. Um, that was when the first video went out. Which was uh, um, unconditional, like the original unconditional track.